Now, when we talk about audit planning, we have to look at uh, that it has both short and long-term goals. Now, your short-term goals should take into account the issues that are going to be covered, say, throughout the next year. Now, your long-term auditing goals are going to take into account issues that are going to regard about changes to the organization's IT strategic direction. And we see this happening all the time, especially when we're looking at uh, uh, future purchases or for, uh, future needs as far as what the uh, IT organization might, uh, part of the organization might be needing. Uh, there may be a plan to uh, bring in a whole new uh, vendor's worth of equipment, new firewall capabilities, new voice over IP, or, you know, something that we're, that we're seeing is going to be in the long-term effect. So that's kind of where we're looking at, uh, you know, beyond the current year at the uh, short-term level. All right, both your long and short-term issues should be reviewed at least annually to make sure that what your, your audit planning had at the time you created these uh, short-term and long-term plans, that they still match the direction that the business is going. Some of the other planning considerations, of course, would be to uh, do periodic risk assessments. And again, we're talking about the planning of when to do the audits. You should have plans in place to uh, do the audits if you have a change in technology. Uh, again, that could be uh, maybe bringing in a new vendor firewall or uh, upgrading to the latest and greatest Windows Server technology. Uh, you know, when that happens, right, we're going to have to have changes in our, or have uh, plans to do audits to make sure that these changes in technology are meeting whatever our standards are. Of course, Laws change, regulatory requirements, new ones might be coming out, changes to existing ones. I remember when I first saw HIPAA, it was uh, contained within one binder as far as uh, when we talked about privacy issues for patients. And now it's uh, like three or four binders in size. And so as those requirements change, uh, we should uh, have uh, plans to do audits to make sure that we are staying within those requirements. Uh, and, of course, there might be, like I said, new system implementations or upgrades that we're going to work with future technologies that we might not even know about right now when we're making our plans for auditing. So that means that we have kind of a, this, you know, idea that as we see new technologies coming in, we're going to have to have plans to include those into our audits. And we need to also plan around our resource limitations. And again, some of the resources, if we look at the auditors themselves as our resource, they might not have the training they need for these new technologies or these changes. Uh, and so we want to plan for that as well so that we can make sure when we're ready to do the audit that we have the resources available or if we have to, to look uh, at an external type of resource to be able to perform these audits. Part of your audit planning should be about the information gathering. Now, what do we need? Well, first of all, we need information about the environment that we're auditing. I just don't want to walk in blind to an organization and uh, start poking around at uh, different things saying, oh, well, I wonder what this does. I wonder what this is doing. I, I want to know how it all works. At least I don't need to have the in-depth, uh, complete design, but I have to have a good understanding of the environment. As an example, I worked with a bank uh, that has um, several data centers across the country. And it's important for me to understand how they are related to each other. What was the purpose of all the uh, data centers? Obviously, it was for high availability that if, uh, you know, they had one in the Midwest, one in the uh, Southwest, and one in the um, West Coast. And, you know, and their goals, of course, were to be able to survive uh, anything going wrong with one city, uh, complete devastation of a building uh, through fire or natural disaster. I mean, they wanted to have uh, enough distance so they weren't even on the same power grids. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, so if I walk in to start an audit, it'd be kind of good if I had that understanding of that big environment so I understood how they all work together. I also want to make sure we know and gather the information about the business practices and the functions that are relating to the audit. We should have the information, the documentation on the type of information systems and technologies that are used to support the business as well as all of the regulatory requirements that are covering that particular business. Now, when we look at the ASACA's um, IS auditing standards, they do require that the auditor uh, address the audit objectives and to comply with professional auditing standards. That is kind of what we're about here, is to make sure that we have standards in place so that we are able to conduct these professional audits rather than, you know, just, uh, just taking a guess or a stab at what I think I should uh, be looking at. Now, the auditor should have um, basically a plan 
uh, that considers the objectives of the organization and see how that those are relevant to what's being audited in the technology infrastructure. That plan should include an understanding of the organization's IT architecture and their technolo uh, technological direction that they're going to go. Again, going back to looking at the future, what is the, um, uh, the uh, ideas that they have as far as where they see their business in a year, in a couple of years, and which direction are they going. So um, that's part of uh, what I talked about with the information gathering. We use that uh, information as a foundation for the actual audit planning. Now the guidelines that we use th that an IS auditor should follow are things like reviewing the background information, such as industry publications or annual reports. They should look at prior audit reports to see what issues were brought up in the, uh, in the audits that were done before this one. Understanding the business and IT long-term plans is a very important part of this. We need to remember that IT and IS is not the center of the business. We're there to support the business. If this business makes widgets, the purpose of IT and IS is to help support that business to make widgets because that's how they make their money. And so we need to make sure we understand what the business needs are and what those long-term plans are. That means we should be talking with managers to learn about the business issues. We should be researching the specific regulations that apply. Every organization has some type of uh, regulation or certification that would cover the type of business that they're in. Uh, obviously, we heard, uh, heard of uh, regulations such as Sarbanes-Oxley and HIPAA and many of those. So it's important that you understand what those regulations are, how they apply to that organization, because that's a part of uh, the, you know, what your goal uh, is or your plan for the audit, is to make sure that you're within those regulations. You should know if any of the IT functions are outsourced. For instance, it's not uncommon for uh, some uh, companies, especially smaller ones, to have an outsourced web presence or outsourced email uh, types of presences. You know, what else is outsourced? Do they have contractors, consultants that come in to do specific high-end types of implementations of maybe third-party applications that they've bought and purchased and are using in that company? You should have generally, you know, as a guideline, a walk through the entire facility of the organization. It's kind of like the idea of having the plans about how the entire organization is laid out and how it is functioning.